Firstly, to get the best of this audio recording, I'd like you to find a comfortable place. Perhaps a reclining chair, a comfy sofa, or even just your own bed. Obviously, don't listen to this audio while driving, using machinery, or doing anything that could be potentially dangerous. Switch off your phones, find a place where you won't be disturbed, and when you're ready, just close your eyes. Close your eyes and listen to the sound of my voice. I want you to listen to the words as you breathe. And when you breathe in, I want you to imagine that you're breathing in relaxation. And when you exhale, I want you to imagine that you're breathing out any tension. Really feel the breath going through your nostrils, down into your lungs, and feel your chest, perhaps even your diaphragm move. Continue to breathe. Remember you're breathing in relaxation and you're breathing out tension. Continue to breathe and I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine that you're beginning to float up out of your body so that you can see yourself relaxing beneath you. It may take a few seconds for you to imagine. Imagine your unconscious floating up above and see yourself. See yourself with your eyes closed, looking relaxed, looking comfortable. That's right. What I'd like you to do is be aware of how light you feel now that you're floating. And I want you to think, think of a place that you associate with comfort, relaxation, a place that you know you're safe and secure, and a place that you know whether you've been there before, would like to have been, whether it's real or imagined, a place that you know you would be completely safe, secure, and relaxed. And I'm going to start counting backwards from 10 to 1. And I want to imagine that you drift and float towards that place. And you can fly through walls to a different part of the world. You can float back in time. And you could float somewhere in your imagination. This place that you're flying to doesn't need to be real. It's just a place that you know that when you arrive, you will be completely relaxed and comfortable. And when you can think of a destination to float to, then I'll start counting. And with each descending number, you'll go 10% deeper and deeper relaxed. Each descending number. You can float back in time, and you could float somewhere in your imagination. This place that you're flying to doesn't need to be real. It's just a place that you know that when you arrive, 
you will be completely relaxed and comfortable. And when you can think of a destination to float to, then I'll start counting. And with each descending number, you'll go 10% deeper and deeper relaxed. Each descending number represents the shifting from the conscious to the unconscious mind, from the alpha brain waves to the beta brain waves, starting to count. Ten. Nine. Feel yourself drifting, floating, moving towards your destination. Eight. Seven. Six. Each descending number. Enabling you to feel yourself drifting, floating, flying towards this place. Feeling 10% deeper and deeper relaxed. Five, four, deeper and deeper, three, two, drifting, flying, floating, one, you can see the place beneath you, zero, you've arrived in the place, the place that you associate with relaxation, a favorite place for you, a place where you know you're safe, secure, completely protected and now that you've arrived in this place I want you to look around look around at your surroundings notice the environment that's around you become aware of whether or not you're inside or outside become aware of the colors whether the light is natural or artificial Be aware of the different objects or shapes that you can see around you. Really notice. Notice if you're fixed or if you can move around your space. Become aware of whether or not you're standing, lying, sitting or perhaps floating. Once you're aware of the surroundings, become aware of the the sounds around you. Perhaps if you're outside you can hear sounds of nature, like the wind, perhaps a breeze, the sound of a stream, waves, water, or perhaps animals like birds. And if you're inside, then I want you to Again, pay attention to any sounds. Maybe there's music. Maybe. Maybe there's a background noise. Remember, it's a private place just for you. And if you can't hear any external noises, I want you to become aware of the sound of your own breathing and your own heart rate. Hear the faint sound of your own heartbeat. Become aware of the temperature. Perhaps you're warm. Become aware of the sensation of the clothes on your skin, the feet beneath, the floor beneath your feet. Really become aware of all your surroundings. If there's a smell, perhaps there's a smell of some kind of fragrance or something natural from the outside. Just become aware of all those sounds. And while I'm talking, if you were to hear any noises in your own environment, sound of traffic or a door or technology in a strange and contradictory way that will only take you deeper 
and deep and relaxed. You will focus on the sound of my words, and these words will take you deeper and deeper into a pleasant state of unconscious relaxation. And now that you're in this comfortable, relaxing space, I will now be communicating directly with your unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is the part responsible for your breathing, when you blink, when you daydream or dream. Those unconscious urges that you don't even think about, they just happen naturally without your conscious involvement. It's that part that I'm now communicating directly with. And for many years now. For many years now, you've been avoiding conflict. For many years, you've avoided making important decisions. And while there was very positive intentions behind why you decided not to make decisions, in order to avoid conflict. This has cost you the ability to have full control over your life and your future. Every good and every bad key thing that's happening in your life right now is directly a result of a decision. Now that decision may have been your own decision, but also it may be the decision of someone else. Maybe you are living where you're living due to a decision. Maybe you're working where you're working due to a decision. And maybe that decision was partly yours and partly someone else's. But your unconscious mind already knows. Your unconscious mind already knows that decisions are responsible for the direction of your future. And at any point in time, if you want to change your future, then you will need to make a new decision. And you can make that decision fully thinking about the implications and the consequences to other people, especially those closest to you. But it will always be your decision, just as other people's decisions are their decisions. But decisions enable you to chart the direction of your future. In the same way that if you are walking to a destination, you would need to make decisions like turning left or turning right, going forward, going backwards. Decisions give you complete control on the direction of your future. And those decisions about your life, if they are made by someone else, mean that your future is placed in the hands of someone that may or may not have your best interest at heart. And if they do have your best interest, then it's still worthwhile for you to be involved in any key decisions that take place. But at the same time, you can ask the opinions of those people that you care for and care for you in order for you to make important decisions. This has cost you the ability to have full control over your life 
and your future. Every good and every bad key thing that's happening in your life right now is directly a result of a decision. Now that decision may have been your own decision, but also it may be the decision of someone else. Maybe you are living where you're living due to a decision. Maybe you're working where you're working due to a decision. And maybe that decision was partly yours and partly someone else's. But your unconscious mind already knows. Your unconscious mind already knows that decisions are responsible for the direction of your future. And at any point in time, if you want to change your future, then you will need to make a new decision. And you can make that decision fully thinking about the implications and the consequences to other people, especially those closest to you. But it will always be your decision, just as other people's decisions are their decisions. But decisions enable you to chart the direction of your future. In the same way that if you are walking to a destination, you would need to make decisions like turning left or turning right, going forward, going backwards. Decisions give you complete control on the direction of your future. And those decisions about your life, if they are made by someone else, mean that your future is placed in the hands of someone that may or may not have your best interest at heart. And if they do have your best interests, then it's still worthwhile for you to be involved in any key decisions that take place. But at the same time, you can ask the opinions of those people that you care for and care for you in order for you to make important decisions. The key suggestion for your unconscious mind is that you look forward to making important decisions. You give full consideration to decisions that take place in your life. You are not afraid of making decisions. And decisions themselves get better the more decisions that you make. The decision making process is almost like a muscle. And the more you exercise that muscle, the stronger and more powerful that process is. To the extent that you can make really important decisions quite quickly, especially once you know is important to you. Because when you get used to making important decisions, your intuition or your unconscious can give you very strong signals as to what could be the best decision for you. Many people will avoid conflict because they don't like to argue and they associate arguing with pain, particularly if they grew up in a household where there were lots of arguments with parents perhaps. But avoiding, avoiding arguments, particularly arguments that could be based around important decisions, may mean 
that you're avoiding conflict in the short term but actually gaining a loss of control for your future and the key suggestion that your unconscious mind will fully take on board is that good negotiation can avoid future conflict it can also avoid initial conflict because good negotiation sounds more like a conversation than an argument because good negotiation always starts from the perspective of listening it's really important to negotiate well to ask questions really gather information on how the other person feels and thinks about a particular subject or topic negation negotiation always takes place before this decision if the decision involves multiple people and you look forward to negotiation you look forward to negotiation because it gives you a sense of confidence empowerment knowing that it's giving your future the right type of future for you while at the same time is really giving respect and consideration for the other people that are really important in your life some negotiation is very easy because good negotiation starts from the viewpoint of listening before explaining really understanding the perspective of another person first and then explaining what you would like as your outcome and then finally agreeing on the best course of action that will enable all needs to be met because good negotiation is not looking for a win for you and a lose for someone else really good negotiation is looking for you to benefit and everyone else to benefit at exactly the same time and the next key suggestion I want your unconscious to grab hold of and carry as a resource is the suggestion that creativity can ensure that everyone wins it may be that you want to do something that's really important to you and another person disagrees but with creativity you may discover that that person has also always wanted to do something but haven't been doing it because perhaps they thought that you would object and this is where creativity and compromise can mean that both parties feel really happy with the decision because you get to do what you want to do and the other person also gets to do what they want to do and creativity doesn't need to happen in seconds creativity can take place over hours days or even weeks and it may be very simple to find an outcome in which everybody wins a martyr is where you feel that you lose but someone else wins and being a bully is where you win and someone else loses and in both cases whether it's the bully or the martyr actually both parties lose because when one person feels 
that something is happening to them or they're not really respecting the perspective or values of the other person but that can be detrimental to the long-term relationship your unconscious looks forward to making big decisions but is very keen to communicate and negotiate before any big decisions that involve other people and you have infinite and unlimited creativity and that creativity can be used in many different circumstances but can certainly be used in the process of negotiation to ensure that not only you benefit and you are moving your life in the direction that you want but also that the other person involved in the negotiation also feels happy and is involved in the process while you're in this unconscious state with a very suggestible unconscious mind I want you to remember a time remember a time that you felt enthusiastic and confident about making a really important decision I want you to go back and think of a time that you made a really good decision but also a time that you felt good about making that really good decision you felt strong you felt powerful and I want you to go back and remember that specific memory and when you've located that memory I want you to climb back inside the version of yourself back then so you're looking at the world through your own eyes seeing the world just as you were back then noticing the clothes you were wearing where you were at the time and I want you to notice the location of where you feel strong and powerful about making your good decision and then when you've located where that strength that power is I want you to imagine that place as a shape and a color so maybe you're seeing a red cube or a purple sphere perhaps it's two dimensional, maybe an orange triangle but I want you to imagine a shape and a colour in the exact location of where you feel that strength that power that confidence about feeling good about making a really good decision and then when you've done that I want you to increase the size of that shape make that shape larger make it about two or three times larger than it was before increase the brightness and the richness of the color so if you saw let's say a red cube I want you to make that cube two or three times larger increase the brightness of that red the richness of that red so you can feel that strength power confidence feeling good about making a really good decision increase and then what I'd like you to do is to go back to the present point in time but still imagine that that shape and that color is still located in the exact location it was and whenever you need to make an important decision I want you to imagine that shape being there in that specific location 
and increasing the size and the richness of the colour. So you get to feel good about making a really important decision. And then I want you to go back to a time, go back to a time when you were involved in a conversation with someone. And you really wanted to listen to their point of view. You may or may not have liked that person, but you were genuinely interested in hearing their point of view. And when you've located that specific memory of being involved in a conversation with someone where you really wanted to know their point of view, again I want you to re-access, climb into that body, almost like the scene from Ghost, where they're climbing into that person. See everything as if you're looking out from your own eyes. See the clothes that you're wearing, see your surroundings, the location that you're in. And be aware of your physiology, your body posture. Be aware of your eyes, what they're located on. Are they looking at the eyes of the other person? Are you leaning forward? Really be aware of your body language. Because sometimes people negotiate in a defensive posture. With their arms folded, not making eye contact, not really even listening to the other person. Just informing them of a decision that they're going to make. And that's not really what you want to achieve really good negotiation. So that time when you were genuinely interested is giving you clues about what you did with your body and then also your tone of voice when you were asking questions to that person. Were you shouting or were you talking? How was your tone of voice when you were genuinely interested in what someone had to say? And your unconscious will take these resources of feeling confident and powerful about making decisions but also will also take a genuine interest in the clues about how you behave when you're genuinely interested in learning about someone else's point of view and perspective and hold on to these and bring them to mind whenever you're making an important decision or getting involved in the negotiation of a decision. In a few seconds time, I will start counting from 1 to 10 to awaken you. You will awaken feeling positive, optimistic, energized, and enthusiastic. All normal sensations will return to your arms and legs and all parts of you will be back in the present. But particularly the parts that will also return will be the parts that are responsible for making really good decisions and feeling good about making decisions and being genuinely interested in the perspective of someone else. You will awaken looking forward to making decisions with a desire to negotiate in a way where everyone wins and really tapping into your creative resources to ensure that you know when that's happened. Starting to count. One, two, three, waking up. Four, five, six, more alert. Seven, eight, open your eyes, open your eyes. 9, 10, wide awake, wide awake, wide awake.